Emily, Ben, what kind of program we expect for Jamie Chadwick? Are we looking at something of a combination of road courses and maybe an oval race or two or strictly the road course races? Yeah, and I think you said a key word here, Joe. There is no current vacant full-time spots open with Andretti Global. So we're definitely going to be looking at her uh, participation in a part-time basis. Um, last season, uh, I think a good opportunity, had she been in that series, would have been the Thermal Club because there was no stakes there in terms of points towards the championship run. Um, this year, of course, there are points associated with that road course. Um, so potentially, if Team Andretti is putting themselves in a really great place early on in the season where it is just them running away with the championship. Perhaps we see here on some road courses later in the season. Um, if not, if any of the three locked in contracted drivers are unable to race or really showing a significant decline, um, of course, Colton Herta was in the championship fight last season. So if they are unable to race in any capacity, I can absolutely see them slotting her in. Um, or if they're not performing, um, of course, that would be quite a shock, um, but give her a chance. Um, but to go back to your original question, Joe, I think if we see her in any capacity, it will be in a road course. Um, the charter system is going to make things incredibly interesting, to your point. People outside of those charters are going to have to fight just to get into the race. So I don't know if we want to put a brand new driver in a fourth Andretti seat doing that. Um, of course, there is a possibility for the 500 at Indianapolis, but again, a big risk. Um, of course, she herself admitted that some things have to fall into place. So it seems like she also has some cautious optimism about it, but we will certainly have to wait and see. Um, ben, I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on this because we have talked about Jamie many times on this program. It seems like she's going towards that Indy car seat, um, but it seems like there's not currently a spot for her to do that that's exactly it emily and uh and again joe i think we, we still need to be honest and open on this show about what we really think i think this is a mistake i think she needed one more year in indy next before she attempted to make this move she came a long way last year give her credit where it's due she was nowhere near winning a race in 2023 and uh she absolutely uh, to your point joe as well dominated that road america weekend um, but I still think there was another step to go before taking that step to one of the most competitive series in the world in the IndyCar series. And also to the point that both of you have made, there is no open seat in Andretti uh, at the moment among their three full-time entries. The charter system also throws a new wrinkle into the equation here. The field size, as you mentioned, Joe, is capped at 27. There are 25 full-time charter teams and two from Prima. 25 plus two is 27 here. So do the math. Uh, I, I just, I, I have a very hard time seeing the, any sort of viability. I mean, we see it in NASCAR now, how hard it is to run an open entry with no guarantee. Um, and it sounds to me, the language that I'm reading, just going back to, you know, the racer.com article from when the news first broke, it sounds to me like the series is pretty much expecting that those 27 entries are going to be the 27 at every race we see this year, aside from the Indianapolis 500, they're saying they don't anticipate there needing to be any bumping or uh, failing to qualify for any of these races uh, outside, of course, of the Indianapolis 500, which has a 33 car count uh, limit anyway and gets uh, several other one-offs. Like we'll see, hopefully, Kyle Larson back and uh, you know several others as well. So that that would be if it's going to be an Andretti ride. The only race that I can see right now being a realistic possibility for Jamie Chadwick next year. If she were to get a full-time seat, the only other thing I can think of is maybe Andretti kind of loans her out to a team like Dale Coyne Racing, who, uh, to my knowledge, still have driver announcements to be made. But it's not just Andretti. I'm just looking down at the the list here. I guess there's maybe still one more open seat at Ray Hall and one more open seat at Hunko Salinger Racing. And that's it. The entire rest of the grid, uh, you know, we got the announcement. Grid Tonight was mentioning it uh, just uh, last night as we're taping this two days ago for everybody watching. Um, Robert Schwartzman got announced as the second uh, Prima driver, and I think if it wasn't going to be him, Logan Sargent was in the running uh, for that seat. So I just look out up and down the grid here. I don't see very many open spots available for really at, hardly anybody at this point. Um, but Jamie Chadwick, especially given her uh, ties to Andretti, we know that team's already locked up. And even if they wanted to loan her out, the only team I could maybe see that happening with is Dale Coyne Racing. So 
again, I we'll, we'll wait and see. Obviously, you know, it's only November. There's still plenty of time for dominoes to fall here uh, in this silly season. But I don't know. I just I have a hard time seeing the the benefits of trying to take this step forward at the expense of returning for one more year in Indian X, even if she does find a seat. I think it would be much better for her long term to go from, OK, you're, you're a rookie in Indian X one season, you're a race winner in season two. Can you become a championship, maybe not even championship winner, but at least a championship contender in season three? Instead, it sounds like she's trying to take this opportunity now. And again, if it opens up, good for her. We'll see what she can do. But I have a hard time seeing anything open at this stage in the game here for IndyCar in 2025. The way it looks with the charter, I just feel like it's going to be very tricky now for anyone coming in. You brought up a good point, Ben, about having her race for a team like Dale Coin Racing, of course, and ready. Right now, they're still with Honda. Dale Coin Racing's Honda, but there's obviously a big difference between a Dale Coin Honda and a and ready global Honda. So I have to ask if you were Jamie Chadwick, and the deal was, okay, you can get some time, but it's going to be with Dale Coyne that will provide technical assistance. Would racing with Dale Coyne racing be a risk for Jamie Chadwick? Because we know the significance of the gap between the two different teams. I just feel like that'd be a little bit too risky and maybe jeopardize the discussion of her making that move full time. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think it wouldn't be like a career death sentence. I mean, I think people are going to forget this. You know, Alex Pillow, where, what team did he drive for in his rookie season in 2020? It was Dale Coyne Racing. Then he goes to Ganassi the very next year, wins his very first race in Alabama with that team, goes on to win the championship. He's won three of the last four. Of course, that's Alex Pillow, generational talent. Sebastian Bourdais had some success with Dale Coyne Racing, uh, an incredibly talented driver, four-time champ car champion, uh, the late great Justin Wilson had some success with Dale Coyne Racing, but again, you know, for years Wilson was considered the most underrated driver in the IndyCar paddock. For a young driver like Jamie Chadwick, and for a team like Dale Coyne Racing, given their lack of resources, their lack of a budget, and particularly where their performance has been the last couple of seasons, I don't know. Again, I mean, I it, even it, again, even if the full time full time season or full time ride opens up here, would you rather be? a rookie who's probably going to struggle for the first half of the year, at least to get up to speed in one of the lesser funded teams in the top series, or would you rather be driving for a top team in Andretti in the second tier series, potentially competing for a championship? And certainly I would think next year competing uh, for more race wins. I know which one I would choose. Maybe it's not the one that Jamie Chadwick would choose. Maybe Jamie Chadwick wants the spotlight and wants to be uh, you know, bearing the torch for for female drivers in the IndyCar series, something that Danica Patrick did for many years, Sarah Fisher before her, uh, Lynn, Lynn St. James, Janet Guthrie, and all those uh, trailblazers in this sport. We haven't had a full-time female driver in this series in quite some time. Maybe Jamie Chadwick wants to take that opportunity by any means necessary. And if she does, that's her decision. But again, for me, I feel like long-term, the best thing that would benefit her, it's not a Dale Coyne seat, you know, with limited resources or, a part-time sort of deal in an era where it sounds like it's about to be harder to be part-time in this series than ever before, it would be another season of any next. And I just think to make this jump right here, forget, forget coin with any team. I think it is a bit of a risk long-term. You know, Ben, Joe, I don't want to get too off topic, but I did want to ask you, do you think that this push for IndyCar is driven by her? Or do you think that there are, I mean, it's probably a little bit of both, like people behind her going like, this is it. This is the time to like really brand yourself. If you're going to make a move into um, IndyCar and really have like the audience backing you, it's this season because you think she's just not going to be able to carry the audience from Indy next for, an for another season. Yeah, I don't know if we can get all three of us back up here. Um, yeah, I mean, again, I think, like you said, Emily, I think it's probably a little bit of both. I'm sure, like, again, you know, I I hate to I'd be careful with how I, you know, phrase it here, but I, I think certainly it would be great for the series, uh, you know, to have, you know, another Danica Patrick, a female driver that's competing uh, on a weekly basis. And even in, in Danica's case, she she won a race uh, at Motegi, Japan in 2008. Um Again, you know, it would be great for the series to have those optics, but I think, um, you know, like everything, 
uh, in the sport, which isn't necessarily, uh, you know, the case in reality, but ideally, you know, you would want that to be uh, done on merit here. And again, just looking at where Jamie's at in her career versus, you know, her teammate, uh, Louis Foster uh, last year, who just ran away with the championship and everything. And, and looking at her c- comparing, comparing her to him, I think, you know, she has the opportunity to maybe not even be as dominant as he was this year, but be somebody again, who can win multiple races in that series this year. But I think she's got a much better chance of success doing that than making that jump to IndyCar. So again, whether it's, whether it's her or the series or, you know, her partners or, you know, teams in the series or whoever, um, I, I wouldn't want to let that ambition necessarily, you know, dictate what's best for her at this particular moment. Of course, long term, the goal would be to get to the IndyCar series. But right here, right now, I again, <laughs> sound like a broken record with how many times I've said it in this episode alone, but I've been saying it all year. She needs to be on a three-year plan in Indy Next. That was year two. I feel like this jump would be make would be being made a year early here. 